Um, and, and it would be criminal to not talk about Belfast. You know, they'll be for me one of, if not the, doing my top three dance sort of you, you know, trans, whatever tracks of all time. Um, that, you know, you've been in Ibiza many, many times over the years, maybe not so much now because I'm, I'm married with a daughter. Um, but, you know, when the sun sets or, you know, it was all that track, it, it, it'd always be on, you know, you'd cap it on more or whatever, you know, and, it, and it's, but when you wrote that track, what was the, what was the story behind it? Was was it when you were on the road DJing or or what? No, when no, no. That was written before Chime. That was sort of was it? early. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, I was just I'd just come home from probably the pizza restaurant. Um, it was a rainy afternoon. It, I, I, it's always a Wednesday. I don't know why. You know, <laughs> that, that's obviously in my head. But it, you know, a rainy Wednesday afternoon, and um, I just decided. I think I'd probably just had the first all album and ambient house was was a thing was a word banded around i thought oh, i'm going to try my hand at some ambient house and then put the track together and then right at the last minute just thought no nah, i want some drums and then just did the drum beat and then went oh yeah there you go that's working and so just sort of did a recording of that put it on a tape you know and then for, i don't know for whatever reason just sort of, it just sort of sat there in the drawer again, like like all the other tracks that I'd written. Uh, sort of some of them ended up on the first album, you know. One of them ended up on Wonky, funnily enough. But um, it's you know it's sort of it. It was just sort of sat there, and then in 1990, early 1990, we went over to play Belfast in with David Holmes, and he said when we were sort of leaving, he said, "Oh, got any tapes? Got any demo tapes? Any unreleased stuff?" And weirdly, I had that tape with me. I guess it was in that era people carried tapes around with them, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And I had two tracks on that. One was the original sort of demo of Belfast and this other track. And um, I left it with him and he rung up two weeks later and sort of said, oh, we love in that second track. We love it. It's brilliant. And when we were putting an EP together, um, we were going to put Belfast on it and just thought, well, let's call it Belfast because they loved it. And it was such a lovely, we had such a lovely time there. And it's, you know, Belfast didn't get a very good reputation at that time. And we thought it was time to readdress that balance, you know, to show, try and show the, the other side of Belfast, the, all the love that we'd found there. You know, people was, it was the best gig we'd ever done at that point. You know, it was absolutely brilliant. I, I agree. I mean, I, I lived in Northern Ireland. I was in the army for 12 years. So I lived in Northern Ireland for about a year and Belfast, anywhere I've been around the world, Belfast is, is always a down as my the best night out ever. And I've had many, many nights out in Belfast. It's the crowd. It's just amazing there that when you go out and about I think Belfast, like you say, it's an amazing place. Yeah, it is. It's, it's it's some brilliant. crazy nights. <laughs> so what, what sort of clubs were you, were you sort of frequenting them before you sort of, you know, got into the music. I mean, obviously, when you're like 16, 17, what was it? Was it some places like Shum in London, or did you not? I, apart from sort of local discos, um, well, there was one actually, it was a local disco, which was really good. It started off as a sort of rare groove kind of, you know, playing things like, um, oh, who we play, you know, like Public Enemy and that kind of thing. Um, that was called Roadblock. And then that, by the time Acid House had hit, you know, it was full on house music, strobe lights and that kind of thing. But they, the guys who ran that just in a place called the Grasshopper, just sort of six miles down the road, they had pretty good taste in music. And that was a really good, it's only like two quid to get in free if you went before 10, you know, that kind of thing. It was, um, that was great. But I used to go to the Coco Club at the Zap Club in Brighton, uh, the Tonka Nights at the Zap Club in Brighton. Um, and then Shum, but I only went to Shum when it was in the in Kensington, um, the Kensington Hotel. I didn't go to it in the, its original location, but Shum was was brilliant. They were my kind of places for pre-orbital sort of acid housing. Then after orbital, I used to go to the Drum Club and the Mega Dog. Right. Okay. Okay. For me, I, I my first um, visit to any sort of club was called Introspective in Stoke on Trent. It's in Longton. Um, right. It didn't last for long, but then it was Shelley's. You've obviously heard of Shelley's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I worked yeah. at Shelley's as well. I, I liked it so much. I even worked there behind the bar. So I'd have like one week on, one week off, but I'd still right. enjoy the night, if you know what I mean. Yeah, we got booked to play there once, and because I'd always heard great things about it, but I'm sure the night they booked us to play was the wrong night for us to play. I'm sure there must have been another night that was much more kind of down our street but the night we played 
it was everyone dancing around their handbags, all the blokes wearing white shirts, and they 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 didn't even expect us to play live. They just assumed we were miming, um, yeah. like all their other sort of PAs, and people c couldn't take tracks like Satan and that kind of thing. They, they liked Chime when we played that, but that was the only one. No, I didn't know. I didn't know you played there on the wrong night because, like you say, I know one night was rough, the rough night, um, especially for long term. But the other night was a dance night. So yeah, and I, I, I remember seeing Prodigy there and a few other bands. But when Prodigy would just had Charlie come out and right. behind the scene in the back room, and they were just like these little skinny lads, just yeah, yeah, normal, you know. And it would have yeah. been nice to see new guys then. But well, maybe it was the right night. I don't know, but it was. Um, <laughs> no, it, it wasn't. Really. It, didn't, it didn't sound. It, it, no. I've seen pictures of the queues, you know, yeah. on a on a rave night, and it just looked like proper ravers. Whereas the night we played, it definitely was. It was house music, but it was all sort of piano, handbag, soul house kind of thing. Yeah, it definitely wasn't the right night. I can tell you that for yeah. a fact. I was there yeah. week, week in week out. Um, so what have you got sort of lined up now then for the future? I mean, also we've, we've talked a lot about the past and we talked about the film, but what have you got? What have you been working on in, in the last six to eight months of lockdown and, you know, going forward? Well, I've got two albums in the pipeline now. I have did did one, I did, I wrote an Orbital album pretty much during, yeah, since kind of around this time last year I started and then finished sort of just before the summer um on and off with that one but um yeah I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that I've got about 15 tracks I'm just got to I'm at that stage where I'm a bit scared because I've got to finish them all now and I, I always hate that last that last little bit yeah. of um finishing them there's Phil on board with that as well there's Phil involved with that orbital one as well no I'm doing that on, well we were supposed to be writing on our own but he hasn't written anything okay um, um, but we do, you know, I am, I'm the writer of Orbital anyway, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know, so it doesn't make much difference. Normally I write stuff and then we might, you know, if he wants to interact, we might sort of sit in the studio and finish it off. Do you know what I mean? And the, the production of ideas and that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, more so since, yeah, well, no, since forever, really. I've always been the writer, really. Um, but I know but, he's had some sort of input, I guess, at times, hasn't he? So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, sort of. It's sort of. It's a funny one. I don't know if you call it a, a muse or whatever, but you know. And he's written a few little lines here and there, but essentially, it would mostly be me writing stuff and him coming in and sort of commenting on it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that yeah, kind yeah. Of thing, you know, having an opinion, which may or may not go down well or not. You know, is it, and, <laughs> but either way, it's an opinion. But yeah. um, you know. Well, you were the big yeah. brother, so <laughs> no, I'm the I'm the little brother. I thought you. Were, oh, I thought you were you were older for some. No, some no, point. no. Oh, I just behave, I just behave like the older brother. Ah, uh, well, no, I always thought for some reason I always thought Phil was younger than you. Yeah, no, that's oh. just behaviour. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I'm <so> corrected. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah. So I've done I've done that, um, and I've got. I've done another album as well with a friend of mine called Murray Lachlan Young, the poet. And during the lockdown, um, we decided to do something together, but he was, he's always doing, he does a sort of weekly poem on Radio 6 on Friday, sort of summing up the mood of the time. And at the beginning of the very, at the very beginning of the lockdown, you know, I said, oh, we should do some kind of diary about the, you know, the lockdown. He said, well, funnily enough, that's what I'm doing on 6. So hmm. why don't I send you my, poem for radio six and you score it every week so we just got into a rhythm of doing that for the whole of the lockdown and did like 14 tracks um so we're looking for a home for that as well but that that got funny in the end you know that's that's sort of like techno sort of bonzo dog doodah band kind of music you yeah know? yeah um so quite different but that was that was really nice to do actually creatively to do a track a week with his kind of witticisms about what the lockdown was like it was very cathartic it was mm. good, good creative process. And I, it helped me with my orbital writing as well, because it was, you know, he'd send me a poem on Wednesday. I'd have to do it on Thursday and send it off for broadcast on Friday. So there was no time to think, um, mm. which is great. Really quick. Are you looking to uh, release the new orbital stuff early next year or is it something like maybe way off? If I get my way, there'll be a release of some kind around spring and then a sort of full album in September. Okay. Full new album. There'll be yeah. some other stuff in around spring if we're lucky. And hopefully by then 
places will be open you can go around and, and tour it i don't think anything's going to be open till the end of next year myself yeah. I, I i'm not really banking on gigs for next year okay. i i know lots of people are hopeful um and lots of people are booking in tours for sort of september october even okay. the gorillas are being bold enough to book august in in the o2 which you know fair play to them if they can pull that off because that'll be one hell of a party if they do um but you know i i just don't see how they're going to let gigs happen yet you know until um it's it's hard i mean i i because i do this and i interview you know musicians and and even people on the stage, there's nothing happening, you know, and people are booking concerts for say next May, June, and I'm still mindful that things might not happen. Um, yeah. Yeah. Refunds and all that. So for yourself then, have you um, gone, have you, you know, have you thought about maybe uh, like I say, we, things aren't going to happen next year. Would you sort of some, do some sort of digital release of what, no, I'm like, like playing a gig from home or something or, you know. Well, the, I've done you know, two of them already. I mean, for the for the new stuff, I mean, for the, the new world. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I'll do, I'll do whatever it takes, yeah. do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, it'd be nice to think of a creative way of doing that. Um, if you're going to do that, you know, do it like television rather than, you know, filming a gig, that would be nice. Yeah. I don't know how to do that, but it'd be good to, to do something like that, you know. Maybe make it like some kind of 60s psychedelia kind of thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, before, I know you, you touched upon what you said about when I asked about the fame or, or when you're a success, when you recognize when you're successful. But um, what I've taken from speaking to you, I, I find that you wouldn't maybe not have appreciated being in the limelight to being, you know, recognized walking down the street by everybody. Um, and you're more happy to be behind the scenes per se, you know what I mean, where you, we know the music, but you, you can walk to Asda or walk through Tesco's and people say, that's not, yeah, yeah. Well, no. you know, do you know what I mean? And, and had it been another way where, you know, you'd been, I don't know, like Moby, you know, everyone knows a Moby as well, a certain age anyway, I mean, obviously maybe 20 year olds don't, but do you know what I mean? You can walk down so you know who he is. Yeah, yeah. But you may, I, I, I get gauged from what I'm speaking to you that you wouldn't have wanted that, ha even if it was, I know you, you are successful, very, but do you know what I mean? You, you, you didn't yeah. yearn for that sort of big, 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 you know, everyone knows who you are and your brother. Yeah, no, not really. I think, I think there were times when, as a younger man, my ego would have liked that, yeah. you know what I mean? But I didn't, but at the same time, I don't think it would have, I don't think I really would have liked that. But I think I was more leaving it up to fate to see if that kind of thing just happens naturally. And I don't think it does. I think from what I now know, the, the wisdom of, of, you know, being 30 years in, I think the people that are like that make it happen, really. Yeah. I think if you want to be famous, you, you, you know, as a, as a product of, to your creativity and success, then it's something you promote, you know. Mm. Moby puts his face on record covers. When you've got your <laughs> face on a record cover, People have got that to look at. When you're, when you're the only time people see your face is in a magazine that they're going to then throw away next week. They don't remember your face. They remember your face when they buy it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Aphex Twin, very memorable <laughs> face, you know, yeah. albeit like that all the time, you know, but, <laughs> you know, and it doesn't look like that in real life, but yeah. it's, uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes. But, um, yeah. you know, you, you might, you know, he's quite recognizable in, in many ways, but. You know, it's it's a it's a choice that you that you make. I think doing that kind of thing. You know, it's like the Chems don't put themselves on record covers, and they're really famous. And yet, I've kind of you know I've I've kind of been hanging around with say Tom, and nobody ever spots him. Do you know? They used to when he used to have the big long Rick Wakeman hair. Mm, do you know yeah. what I mean? They're, and they're in a club environment, but then that's where you're going to get spot. Even I get spotted in club environments. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But. Um, Generally speaking, you know, I can bump into because he doesn't live that far away from me. I can bump into him in Lewis High Street, and nobody's bothering him, you know. Yeah. But they don't. Again, they don't promote their faces. The Chemical Brothers. It's not about celebrity. It's about the music, isn't it? It's yeah. And also the, the the passion for it, rather than the yeah. fame, fame and fortune. Because there's, yeah. a, there's a famous word in where people say that fame and fortune can fuck you up. You know, especially as a young younger person. Um, yeah. But for you, obviously, you you've been your brother. You, no. you, you it hasn't fucked you up, no. um, and and you've done very well. You know, by being grounded. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely grounding not doing that. Um, it's a, it can be annoying sometimes. You know, so you've got people like Goldie. Yeah, you know, everyone knows who Goldie is because yeah. he puts his face out there. You know, yeah. and um, I you know I remember trying to get into the VIP room at the 
um, a fabric with, you know, with Goldie in the queue. And he's just like, oh, mate, hey, straight in. I go to get in there. Sorry, son, you can't come in. It's like, hang on. Don't you know who I think I am? And it's like, fuck <laughs> off. You know, and it's, it's like, oh, for God's sake. You know, and you're going, Goldie, Goldie. And he's like, he's fucked off somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Chatting to Bjork or whatever. And you're like, oh, bollocks. You know. <laughs> and um, so it can be annoying. <laughs> it can be annoying at times. But, you know, that's that. I think the amount of times that that kind of thing annoys you definitely doesn't outweigh the amount of times that it annoys Goldie trying to walk around Esther. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I've seen Goldie out and about. And yeah, I know you mean. He gets mobbed. Yeah. Um, but you've, you know, I guarantee you've never ever said to someone, do you know who I am, though? I would not never thought you would have said that. No, know? that's not really no. me. No. <laughs> no. Oh, gosh, no. 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 Yeah, I'd be more likely to say, don't you know who I think I am? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's life like for you then? Do you, you know, I mean, I know now why, for myself, I'm like, I'm 47, you, you're early 50s. What, what is, what's life like for you apart from making music? Is it, is it sort of? How do you sort of switch off? I mean, it's, like I say, it's a completely random question, but what, how, what's your sort of escapism? Um, and, it, and this isn't new. This is something I've always done, um, probably because of where I grew up. But I go walking in the countryside a lot. I mean, a lot. Do you know what I mean? I, um, that's my favourite escapism. And I don't do it with headphones and listen to music and all that kind of thing. I, I, that's... I used to, but it's like you just miss half of what you're there for, you know. Um, I walk in the countryside. I like to meet, you know, very simple. I like to meet people in pubs with good real ale and no loud music. Do you know what I mean? It's like, that's about it, really. Yeah. Um, apart from that, you know, making sure that I'm enjoying my family as they grow up and, you know, being a family man at home, going on holiday to St. Ives or something like that, you know. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, I enjoy, you see, the things I'm, I'm quite grounded in the sense I enjoy my work. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, yeah. I like writing music. So I just try and find ways to, you know, legitimize writing music as often <laughs> as I can. And yeah. that's that's great, you know, buying the odd new synth. Yeah. But, um, I was only asking because I, so I always like ask musicians, you know, very talented musicians, because how do they sort of switch off? Because I know some don't, and their life is just music writing music or creating I know music. people like that, yeah. You know, and sometimes it's maybe I, I, I'm not a musician, right? I, I, I'm right, but I, I have to switch off, and I find it's very unhealthy if I just do the writing or all this sort of stuff all the time. You've got to switch off, and but I know some yeah. musicians don't. And, and it's, yeah, no, I think I didn't used to. Um, in the 90s I was very driven and I didn't switch off and uh, the, you know I part of me understands that a lot of the successful musicians that I know is because they were driven like that and if they weren't they probably wouldn't have been success they would, wouldn't have made it through you know it's mm -hmm. it's definitely a kind of the people who make it are the ones who want to make it not necessarily the talent do you know what I mean it's you know not to put myself or anyone else down but you know, maybe it's a combination too. You've got to have the talent to a certain level, but then if you can drive yourself as well, yeah. then the two things combine to success, you know. But I do switch off now because I, I realise that if I, you know, if I give myself two hours to write a piece of music, I'll do it in two hours. If I give myself two days, I'll, it'll take two days. It's like packing for a holiday, you know. If someone gives you half an hour, you'll do just as well, a good a job as if you've got four days you still forget something, even if you've been packing for four days, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. And so I, I know now it's about ideas. It's about just execution. And that doesn't necessarily mean equal time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I know one, I think, did you release or did do a, a remix last year from, was it Maru? Yeah. Um, have you got Pied. anything else? Yeah, yeah, Pied. Have you got anything else lined up? So do any remixes for them or are you going to no. do no, we've got nothing. In fact, that, and you've just reminded me, they owe us a remix. I'm going to get on to okay. them. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, nothing at the minute, apart from, you know, I'm doing stuff with Murray Lachlan Young on one of his projects. Um, I, you know, got a couple of albums to come out. I want to get this score out there. Um, we've got to finish off my Orbital album, which is just the sort of last bells and whistles and checking it through. Um, which will probably all happen much better if I get a deadline and then yeah. only have a couple of hours to finish it. I'll finish it, whereas I'll just take too long to finish it now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm 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 kind of bursting with new ideas again. I've got, and that's why I need to finish some of this other stuff because I've got loads of ideas for 
tracks that I want to do. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, doing a few um, very club orientated sort of back to sort of basics dance music again. Oh, okay. Um, which is good fun. It, it um, must be hard though um, to sort of compartmentalize the different areas. Like, say, you, you, you mentioned that, that the dance music type stuff, then you've got your, your film stuff, you know, then you've got your the orbital stuff. And it must be hard trying to. Well, not for me, I, 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 can't, I can't visualize it at all. But for you, I mean, you obviously have been doing it for, for long enough now, but it, do you still find it hard to sort of, you know, put pigeonhole, say that sort of uh, element of dance music then to another and then this, this? You no, it's, it's like, easy. It's just, it? you know, it's like orbital stuff is anything at all. Um, <laughs> you know, and then it, it's a bit like, you know, imagine you're writing three or four articles. They don't cross pollinate off, or they might do. And you might get a good idea for one. And so you think, oh, that was a good structure. I'm going to throw that in that structure into the next one. So they all kind of bounce off of each other in good ways. But, you know, you don't mix them up. You sit down and you've got your film scoring hat on or, you know, currently I'm doing kind of fairy tale music for Murray Lachlan Young. And that does not cross pollinate with my dance music stuff. But then I might find a really good sound and think, oh, yeah, I'll use that in mm. the other thing, you know. Um, you just put your different hats on, which again, is that's kind of nice. And yeah. it's nice to have different things to sort of switch between. As long as you start, as long as you do finish things and don't procrastinate too much, you know. Yeah. How, how do you avoid procrastination? Is it just if you, you never ever procrastinate at all? Is it sort of not in your, in your, in your sort of makeup? I, no, I do, because I'm leaving the Orbital album at the minute. Okay. I, that I'm, I'm avoiding it because I'm kind of thinking, oh, I don't know how to finish that track. I don't know how to finish that one. And that's probably because they're finished. But I don't, I'm a bit scared to say they're finished because it's a, it's that thing, isn't it? It's like when you're doing any creative act, when you're working in it, it's going to be the best thing you've ever done. Mm -hmm. When you finish it, it isn't the best thing you've ever done. Of course it isn't. If it was, you'd never do anything again. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's how work goes. You know, you, that's what creativity is. You're doing the best thing ever. Oh, that's all right. And actually, you come back to it a couple of weeks later and say, like, oh, God, I really like that. And it kind of develops again. But it's that that thing that sometimes just finishing is putting a final kind of I, I think it's the thing that lots of people find hard about creativity I've watched it with musicians that never finish anything because mm. they can't they, they find that last stage crippling mm. and I think I've always been a good finisher because and I don't know whether it's a sense of sort of cavalier oh I've had enough of working with that so it's finished now Wh whatever it is um, I think it's a good skill to have a good uh, as a producer to know that that's finished, let it fly, and I'm going to move on to something else, you know. Um, so that's what I've got to do. And I think the reason I'm not doing it with the Orbital album is because I haven't got a release date or a deadline. If okay. I had one, then I would definitely, it would just happen really quickly. Maybe you should write a book on management skills, you know, what you just said there. And it's, you could put that into any sort of philosophical book or management guru. Yeah. And people take note of what you just said. Yeah, I just need someone to teach me how to monetize it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, do, you do a fine job with the music anyway, so. Um, yeah, yeah. Fine. Well, thank you. Um, I, I know you've got to shoot now and you've got another thing to do at half past, so I'm mindful yes, of that. Yes, indeed. So, so, um, but it's, but it's been, honestly, it's been a joy talking to you, mate. Honestly, I really and appreciate you. it. Thank you. Um, and hopefully I get to see you in person at some gig or in the future. So. He's hoping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. Maybe not next year, but the year after. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We well, never know. It could be the end of next year, but, you know. Yeah, hopefully, anyway. All right, Paul. Nice one. All right. Paul. Cheers. Thanks, man. Nice one. Cheers, mate. Thank you.